Hi, as you can see I'm using Circuit Wizard and in this video I will quickly demonstrate how we can convert this circuit diagram into a PCB. Now there are many ways we can do this but let's click this button to get started and just click next. Now we get the options to choose track thicknesses and also double sided. Well single sided is what I would recommend to start off with. Double sided is for more advanced users. Placement only that will um, place components on a PCB but won't actually draw any tracks between them. So we don't want that, that's not a beginner's thing. And rat's nest as well, that's more of an advanced thing which maybe we could do in another video. So it's going to be one of these three and you can change the track thickness later so don't worry about it too much. I will just choose normal for the moment. Uh, I'm not going to click that, we're going to come back in later and we will do that. So let's just click next. Uh, this is fairly uh, obvious the meaning here so we can change the shape and uh, specify a size I'd normally just leave that alone we can change that ourselves later click next and then click convert and it's going to show you in a sort of a real world view the layout of the board including the components so everything's automatically routed as you would expect in such a simple circuit and I'm now going to press ctrl A to select all and I like to press ctrl F8 and that fits it to the screen. You don't have to use those shortcuts if you, can, if you want, you can zoom in with the uh, wheel on mouse. So I recommend against staying in this view. We're in real world view at the moment. We're not really interested in what the parts look like, it's the board. So I'm going to click normal and that's a much more useful view. Now the circuit would work, the PCB would work, but it's not the best layout. Now uh, a typical mistake now is for people to start dragging components around like this and already you can see that things are going a little bit wrong like that and then say if you then pull around like there then you've got tracks crossed over so definitely don't do that just press ctrl z to undo. If you want to move components around click any one of the tracks anything any any one of the tracks right click and go on to routing and then choose interactive routing. I really recommend enabling interactive routing right from the start. And now when you move a component like this, you'll see that things move around without getting uh, all uh, connected up with each other. So I would generally recommend having the power down here, bottom left, and this is a switch, or this is a connector block for the switch. So I'm gonna move that, and I'd like that rotated around. I will press Control L to rotate left or rotate anti-clockwise. There are um, buttons here. So you can do Control L to go uh, anti-clockwise and you can do Control R to go clockwise like that. So I find it's convenient to use the keyboard mostly. But, you know, you can use those buttons. And so then I'll uh, rotate that and I'll move that one in. My, my objective, by the way, I accidentally clicked the label rather than the component now. That happens quite often. Uh, but I've, what my objective is to get this circuit board a little bit smaller, so I'm just going to pull in a little bit tighter here, and I'll pull in that resistor there, and then of course I want to rotate that, Control R. And my advice for students starting out will be, say if you've got LEDs, to have all the LEDs oriented the same way around, so you've got the cathodes at the bottom, you've got the zero volts at the bottom there, that's, that's generally probably going to be uh, quite helpful for people. Now this red area, or it was red until I clicked it, this red area, uh, this represents the copper area on the board and then the white represents the area that has uh, the copper that's been removed around the track. So that could be removed chemically or it could be milled out. Don't worry about that too much for the moment. The This area here, this represents the board and it's worthwhile understanding uh, the impact of, of that because if say you try and move a component like that it will root but if you go off the board it won't be able to root so that when you've got these green lines it's an unrooted uh, track so let's just go back and now it can root again so if that happens to you hopefully you understand there's, there's no issue with that track going up there like that but you don't have to accept it like that so if you wanted you could say pull that node up like that and of course now I've broken that so I can now go up like that and if I wanted to you know I can just drag around again it starts uh, double click by accident there you can just drag these components around 
Um, let's let's go into that uh, node there, that, that elbow corner, and then I can just drag that out like that. So that's useful. Sometimes, let's just zoom in a little bit, sometimes you actually want to have another elbow in or another node, so I can just right click anywhere along the track and add a node. So if that's what I was after, and it's not what I would recommend, but you can do that. If you want to get rid of one of these nodes, you can just drag them uh, into like a component there. So let's just pull that back in like that. Uh, if I press Control A and then Control F8, that uh, fits to the screen again. So it's worthwhile knowing that. Now, uh, that's as I say, that's the copper area, and so I'm going to drag the board down size. It's actually it's not important whether you drag the board down tightly because it doesn't in any way define what's going to be made. So that, that board looks roughly right. Um, let's just Control A and Control F8 again to fit. Now, presumably, you probably want to make a more complex board than this. Now, if if you're happy with it as it is at the moment, and, and I still think there's some things that would change, but if you were happy with this and you want to check that this is actually the same as that, uh, then what you need to do, you need to go on to Project, uh, PCB Components, and then go on to Quality Check. And you have to click this Save As thing here. So that, that's an absolute okay. If you don't click that, and you can just save it anyway, it doesn't really matter. Um, but you have to you have to save that. And uh, what you then do is you then when you click on OK, it's going to compare the layout on this PCB with the circuit diagram here. Now, if you had multiple circuit diagrams, you might need to choose one from the from this drop down box. But as I don't, I I can just leave that as the default. So it's going to check whether they are the same or not. And it's going to, so let's say if for some reason you had changed a component in this PCB view, or maybe you'd even switched around, say, a resistor. So although it doesn't matter whether the resistor is turned around, uh, you might find that that flags up an error. So it's best not to change any components in this PCB layout view. It's best to keep them all connected as they were uh, automatically connected. So I'm now going to click on OK. And you'll see that uh, there's no issues now. Let's let's uh, deliberately introduce a problem. So, for example, let's uh, let's just break this track. And now, if I then uh, do this, try to do the same again, so I go quality check. And I don't think I need to save the sum because I've already previously saved once. Let's just click on OK, and you'll see that there's a warning here. Okay. Right, now uh, what I would uh, recommend doing before you, you know, this is okay, it's, the uh, routing's okay, the components are as they should be, but if you were actually going to mill this out in the classroom, you need to change some of the pad sizes. These, these pad sizes for the components are rather small at the moment, and you'll find it difficult to solder them up, and also these tracks are rather thin. That means that it's more likely that you'll have some sort of problem either during making the PCB or, say, cleaning up or something. I really recommend having larger tracks. So to change the pad sizes, you can click the component, right-click it, and you can go on to pads, and then you can change the size. Now, because these are round pads, uh, there's not actually a diameter. You have to specify width and, and height. So, for example, I, I recommend uh, pads for resistors 3 millimeter in diameter. So I would say 3. I just tab across and 3. And then I click on OK. So that, that's the pad size I would recommend. Now, I'll just undo that. What I would normally do, I wouldn't do each uh, resistor individually. I would just click one, and then I'll press and hold shift, and then I would click the next one, and uh, then I would select all the resistors uh, doing that, uh, shift clicking all of them, and then right click, and then I'd go pads, and then I would uh, go three millimeters by three millimeters, so keep it round, and those then would be nice and easy to solder up. Uh, you don't have a lot of option on the LEDs because of the uh, closeness of their pins. Uh, if you're going to use these terminal blocks, or even maybe you're not going to use a terminal block to be able to solder on, uh, you could easily uh, change the size of these if you wanted. So let's just select those two together, go onto pads, and quite often recommend go 4mm, 4mm. That makes them super easy to solder up. You've got massive pads there, nice and easy to solder onto. Um, what else? Well, there are other things you can do. Uh, if we were going to route this out on the CNC milling machine in the classroom, I would also recommend changing the track thicknesses. So to do that, I'm going to do a Control A that selects the whole board, 
and then I just right click anywhere and I go on to properties and it says the track width so I normally recommend 1.5 millimeters uh, I'm not going to bother about the gap I'm not bothered about that so and then I click OK and now as you can see that those tracks are uh, at that much more chunky and that's going to run out more easily if you do change the track thicknesses just be aware that you may possibly have uh, short circuited one track to another so it would be a good idea I, I can say I haven't in this case but it would be a good idea to once again uh, go on to uh, quality check again and just check that it's all right okay that's getting started there are other things that you can do and you can have multiple attempts at uh, making a circuit board if you've uh, if you've been successful using this method what I would recommend you then do next is you have another go and you try you know, it doesn't matter which one of these you use again uh, but next time around perhaps you try customizing and then you can then change some of the components as well as you go along uh, and also another thing which you can do is you can have a go with uh, choosing placement only or rat's nest.